Hello, everybody. This is Nicole Whitlock with the Econ Sellers Podcast. I have with me on this amazing journey, and I'm so tired today, guys. Kelly is too, but I have with me on this amazing journey the awesome, the amazing, the beautiful. Kelly, the Econ, my lord. I'm, you know, trying to wake up. I fell asleep on the couch, you know. You're just sitting there, and next thing you know, you're waking up, you know. I know exactly what you mean. Kelly, you look absolutely fabulous. I love the hair. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, I was telling Kelly when we were talking before we went live, I was like, she said, yeah, I just put some mousse on it and scrunched it up. And I'm like, yeah, my life is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hair is clearly doing its own thing. At the top, what's sticking out is little brittle prixels. And then in the root, it's doing something else. I'm like, oh. I mean, it's growing back weird. Anyway, I don't understand it. I fought the curls for so long, and then it's just like, just get your giving these curls and just go go with it, you know. Go with it. You look at it. I straight my hair, and that takes forever. It just <laughs> takes two seconds. You know? <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. So, Kelly, what are you getting ready to do after we finish this? She was talking earlier. It was so funny. I was like, oh, my God, we should have caught that. <laughs> so well, I, got, I got dinner marinating in the in the fridge. Um, had, and I'm like, I don't understand. You know, you do the they show these recipes on the on the YouTube and, you know, it seems so quick and easy. And now like all, you know, all they do is they snap their finger and their chicken's already cut. I'm sitting there for 45 minutes cutting up chicken. You know, <laughs> That is so true. That is so true. I thought that was so funny. I said, Oh my God, we have to share that because that is really true. Like I buy the cut chicken. I don't, ain't nobody got time for that. As a matter of fact, I was like, okay, let's get the crock pot going. Let's get the Instapot going and let's get the oven going so we can be done with the cooking for the week because I'm not trying to be in the kitchen no more this week. <laughs> so after I finish this, it's like, okay, I get to go through all of that activity. Yeah, I'll but, be doing a lot more cooking because I decided to go on a diet and lose some of this weight. And so <laughs> I feel you. Trust me on that one. I feel you. I really do. Two and a half pounds. So, hey, I know. Go, girl. All right. I am not going to say I'm down two and a half pounds. As a matter of fact, I'm running from the scale. So, anyway, I need to get on the scale so we can know what our starting point is and then go from there. But I have so many things going on that I'm tackling, including dealing with taxes. So, that's a whole nother conversation. We got two weeks, y'all. Two weeks to get the taxes done. Yeah, we're trying to deal with that with the new house and everything and oh, husband okay. trying to get the homestead exemption filed and yeah. it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot so anyway in our lives we got a lot going on with that being said this is the econ sellers podcast and we come to you every monday at 8 30 p.m central standard time i invite you to share this out with a friend share this with anyone that's on the e-commerce journey or thinking about going on the e-commerce journey, we love to share e-commerce news, tips, and more. And so we hope that the information we share with you will be a blessing. Oh, with that being said, um, I do want to encourage you to also check us out on the e-com sellers uh, clubhouse. So you can join our e-com sellers pod clubhouse. Uh, we meet every morning to talk about e-commerce. Just get your pep talk for the day, get you focused, get you centered on what you need to do in your business. So with that being said, I'm actually going to yield the floor to Miss Kelly so she can give us the latest e-commerce news. And then I'm going to piggyback on top of that. Okay. Just a few things I found uh, before I fell asleep. Uh, <laughs> um, Google. Google says start rating sellers on shipping and such with their shopping experience scorecard program. And sellers who meet the performance standards will receive a trusted store badge. Which they say they get more clicks because if they have that trusted store badge, because you know people were like, "Well, this person has a history." Just just like you know, you see on eBay and Etsy has the star seller, and so everyone's you know going to this little badge to say these, these sellers you know ship quickly and you know the products come as stated and such. Okay, um, eBay. eBay's been is offering advice for rural, 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 yeah. <laughs> sellers 
sellers um, using United States Postal Service due to reports from some sellers that um, some carriers have, you know, the post office has been uh, limiting the amount of packages they will scan. You know, mm. if you bring in 20 packages, they're like, oh, no, you got to have a scan. So they want they encourage the people to use scan sheets. But a lot of sellers are like, well, I get sell from five different platforms. Like I sell from five different platforms. And so if I bring in seven items or eight, not eight or nine, ten items in one day. Yeah, three could be from eBay, but two could be from Macari and another one from Poshmark and, you know, another couple from Etsy. And so it's hard to get scan sheets when they're not from the same place. But they did um, cover and discuss this issue on the recent um, eBay for Business podcast. So you can go and listen to them talking about this. I know I've heard lots of um, resellers who do YouTube talking about this too, about having, you know, to fight with their, um, their uh, post office. Mine has a kiosk. I don't know if people know this, but mine has a kiosk on the outside where people can weigh and get their packages, um, labels and stuff and not have to go wait in line, you can scan your items. You could just go in there and hit and go in there and you can just scan your items. And it's not really an acceptance scan, but it's kind of some kind of scan to say it was at the post office. Okay. So, um, taxes, um, fun stuff. Uh, we're just going to say, make sure that you have your own CPA. If you have questions, this is just, Something y'all need to know. Um, if you receive any virtual currency, so that's like, you know, the crypto cryptocurrency for the payment in 2021 for goods or services, you must answer yes to the question at the top of the IRS 1040 form that reads, at any time during 2021, did you receive, sell, exchange, or otherwise dispose of any financial interest in any virtual currency. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of places, I know, um, some of the uh, online places are starting to accept crypto. Yep. You know, so you might have to check your uh, sales to see if you have that. Yeah. And Etsy had a really interesting um, survey they did from their sellers and a lot of them like asking why they sell and such and majority people about over 60 i think it was like 68 percent said that they started selling for like more you know for extra money and uh, others uh and you know it broke down it's very interesting because it broke down how many were women? How many were just a one-person operation? How many work from their home? And like ninety-five percent were sellers were from their home. Um, and how many? Uh, can't remember anymore. But there was. It's very interesting. It broke down all the stats and stuff. I know Nicole would like all those numbers and <laughs> such. But I would. I gotta go now. I gotta go find that article so we can talk about it next week. <laughs> <laughs> There's my e-commerce bites. I saw it. So okay, <laughs> I just didn't write down. I was like, "That's a lot of stuff to write down." I'll try to remember it. <laughs> I do love stats. <laughs> All right, is that everything? That was everything that I got. Like I All said. Right. It was I'm confident there's more news out there, guys. I just want to remind you, we are in Q2. We are officially in Q2. So hopefully your Q1 was amazing. Hopefully you finished Q1 strong. Hopefully you got to your gold numbers. If you didn't, you still got time to at least push yourself in Q2 to get where you want to be in your e-commerce business or to do the things. Maybe you want to learn something new, do something different. So there's still time to do those things. So I just want to encourage you along this journey trying to figure out how to fix my, anyway, my adjustments need to be fixed up here. I got all kinds mm -hmm. of issues today. All right. So we're going to go ahead and share the screen. 
Oh, this is Autism Awareness Month, too. I got a lot going on, y'all. I just do. I'm trying to finish up stuff from the summit. Still, like a month later, it's just so much that's going on. All right, so let's talk about this news, shall we? Oh, wait a minute. This is an article. I hate it when they do that. Like, oh, you can peek at the article, but you can't really see it. All right, so this one is evidently talking about the Amazon workers in Staten Island voting to unionize. So uh, this was on the New York Times. Now, I know that there's a bunch of other articles out there that are not like censored right now because, you know, I bring all these up before we have the meeting. So then it just pops up and then it covers it. So the what you might want to do is just you can do a Google search for unions uh, and Amazon and see what's happening. You know that there's going to be some level of impact to those that are selling on Amazon and or those that are selling, you know, online. So you just want to be mindful of that because if it starts with Amazon, there may be other warehouses that decide that they want to unionize. And so, again, this could have a downstream effect or impact um, to sellers uh, that are using, um, you know, 3PLs and things like that, using Deliver, maybe even Amazon where uh, fulfillment services, sorry, not Amazon, Walmart fulfillment services, WFS. So this could be an impact to that as well. So just brace yourself, be prepared for that. Uh, not saying, you know, what, how long it's going to take for this to ripple through the industry. It may be a year or two before it really kind of ripples through the industry. But I will say this, you know, there's a lot of talk about uh, employees being frustrated or people being frustrated, people walking off the job, just not the warehouse, but in general. For the last 18 to 24 months, I mean, they call it the great resignation. So companies are paying attention to employee dissatisfaction. So this is something that will probably be addressed. And the cost of it, if there is a cost impact, will more than likely be pushed down to sellers and consumers. So if it's pushed down to sellers, sellers have to push it down to consumers. So you need to be prepared for that. All right. Um, so there is a conference. It's a pretty big conference and it's called 3E3. This is what I'm showing right now. And they normally talk about electronics and all kinds of uh, things like that. And so they're not going to have a conference in 2022, but they will have one in 2023. And so just, you know, want to make you aware of that. If you're a person that's selling electronics, if you're a person that is selling games and things like that, a conference has been canceled. Uh, you know, gaming is a big industry. I mean, there's like betting going on in gaming, <laughs> like it's huge. And there's all kinds of products that you can be selling around the gaming industry. You know, you can be selling everything from gaming games itself, all the accessories, all of the, you know, the handheld, you know, toys and desks and all kinds of, you know, there's so many different accessories you can be selling around those who are in the gaming industry. So, and then of course, Oculus and the whole headset thing. And, you know, I don't know enough about all this stuff. I'm just going to tell you right now, <laughs> my level of ignorance is super high, but I do know that that stuff sells. So uh, something to be mindful of. I do find that knowing about the upcoming conferences or, and, or expos and, or, you know, different things like that, where there's going to be a showcase of several different vendors, trade shows and things like that is good to know. And going to go check those out is good to know. So the reason that it's good to know is because then you can find out what's the potential next big thing, or you can find out what's uh, selling or maybe find vendors that maybe you can do business with in the future around these types of products. So know that this is continuing to be big and that, you know, if it's an industry you're selling in, that, that particular expo conference is canceled. Here's another one. What is going on here? Um, so this one is <laughs> 34 employees. Oh, the Shopify mafia and base embrace the e-commerce giant. I don't know what it said. I don't have these memorized guys. Um, okay. So here's the deal. There are a lot of people that have decided that they're going to launch their own stores and launch their own, um, launch their own businesses online. And so that article is talking about, I do remember reading that one when it wasn't locked, but anyway, where there was another version of it um, that they call it the Shopify mafia. These are the people that first were the first ones to be on Shopify, to sell on Shopify and, or, you know, some of the bigger sellers on Shopify. And so basically the platform Shopify is a great one to be selling on. I know that they've been impacted in the stock market this past week. 
that I'm aware of. So um, I do want to encourage you, if you think this is your year that you're ready to launch a product, you've got a product identified, you have an idea, you have a concept, don't be afraid to jump in and try Shopify. It is a great platform to sell on. It's easy to use. And uh, we have an awesome Shopify training on that. But anyway, it's a great platform and it's easy to use. The next one is uh, Visa launches NFT program as it considers digital art, a new form of e-commerce. So if Visa is launching an NFT program, there's going to be others that are going to follow suit. That probably means that more and more um, integration of non-traditional ways of uh, classifying the value of things and, and making money are going to continue to be accepted. So I don't know anything about NFTs. I'm not even going to sit here and act like I do because I don't. But <laughs> I will say this. I do have it on my radar. It's something I do want to learn over the next six months. I don't know. if. Sorry. I don't even know if I have the bandwidth to even think about trying to learn it. But <laughs> I know it's probably going to be a big thing. So much like I missed out on some of the cryptocurrency stuff from 2017 and 18, trying not to be too far behind on the NFT stuff. I feel like my boys have plenty of things that we can do the NFT for. But again, I, my ignorance level is pretty high, so I don't know enough about it. And then the last article is around Walmart's new redesign. I mentioned this in the last podcast, but I couldn't, I didn't have the article up. So Walmart is redesigning sections of the store to be very similar to Target. You notice that. So, you know, Target's always red and it's always got. So they're doing these little store uh, floor models, kind of little mini areas. It kind of feels like to me, like the Ikea little, this is your little spot right here. And it's got everything set up in, in this little spot. But in any case, um, I don't know how many stores it's been pushed out to. But this is something that you'll start to notice over time in the different Walmarts. They may not have as many of them as Target does, because you normally can see those at the very front of the store or during through the main aisles of, of Target. Um, those I've always paid attention to. It's kind of nice to have that little setup. Um, so just be aware that there's going to be some similarities between Walmart and Target over the next several, probably, I don't know, 12 to 18 months, you'll start to notice this happening. And I think this is really interesting. Have you seen this in your area, Kelly? Uh, I don't go into stores. I just order and pick up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Well, with those people that are, you're going to probably start to notice this. So, um, you know, just be aware of it. If there's going to be the layout, it's going to feel like this feels familiar. It'd be like, oh, probably the whole Target thing. So pretty yeah, I cool. I went time I went to Walmart maybe a month ago and I didn't see anything like it. But to me, I'm like, if that tries to come to my store, they'd uh, the people, the customers will have it tore up with it quickly. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Because sometimes Walmart customers are a different breed. Not all the time. I mean, heck, I'm a Walmart customer. But yeah, you know, I see all kinds of stuff on a Friday night at a Walmart. And I'm like, geez, Louise, people, come on. But in any case, I think this is pretty interesting. So be on the lookout. Uh, this is an article about it. This is in Fast Company. Um, came out on January 27th. And so I don't know why it took me so long to share it. But you should start to see this over the next couple of months, probably the next, like I said, anywhere, probably 18 to 24 is probably more realistic, but they're going to push them out. So trying to drive more traffic to Walmart. And so with that being said, that is our latest glimpse into the news. I'm confident there's some more news that we missed and we apologize for that. We'll try to grab it next week and we're going to move on to our tip. So let's go, Kelly. Are you ready for the tip? Yeah, I love going to thrift stores. <laughs> and then you can get, this is stuff to also look at garage sales because it's becoming garage sale season now that, it, you know, I know some places they still got snow, but down here, I mean, you know, we're in the 80s and, you know, as a They started garage sale season last month. Okay. <laughs> you can look at garage sales almost year round down here. So. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. So this is six thrift products to sell in Q2 
not necessarily pro- i mean these are things you find at the thrift store okay mm-hmm. <laughs> six products you can find at the thrift store to sell in q2 q3 q4 q1 pretty much <laughs> so i'm gonna let kelly start with the first one yeah books and textbooks i mean textbooks especially um everyone's like well school starts in september well don't forget about there's kids that go to summer school they take us you know maybe they might take a couple of classes during the summer just to make it easier during the year and finish up their uh degree faster um so they had to take summer classes um so you know you can do textbooks if you can't sell them on amazon there's always ebay um and just books i sold um I sold some books on eBay this last week. I sold it was a set of um, old vintage Star Trek books. And I just I pay, I got them all at a, a thrift store. Um, there's my one of my thrift stores. Want to hint hint? If your thrift store has a newsletter and telling you what's on sale, sign up for it. Um, but uh, the thrift store was having fill a bag, so. I filled a couple bags for full books, paying five dollars per bag, and so that made my books like five, ten cents each. And I got these uh, Star Trek books from like the seventies, early eighties. Um, in that, in that book pile, and I sold the whole set for twenty bucks. You know, so plus shipping. So it wasn't too. You know, it's you can still make good sales of books on ebay it's not just all amazon books do sell on ebay and i sell books on etsy i've you know but there's lots of places you can sell books besides amazon there you go all right um i agree with kelly and i also want to mention like okay we're talking about q2 not that you can sell books year round but uh you know you're going into mother's day which is clearly in q2 and giving books for that uh you're going into school being out and so kids not regressing over the summer so giving them books to read to keep them active in addition to taking them to the library but making sure that they have something to keep their little minds going workbooks textbooks things like that giving them activities and then also having summer activities so there's different books on crafts and things to keep the kids busy over the summer so you know books are going to be a thing that people will buy to give others they will use themselves um to keep kids engaged especially as we go into the summer months so and cookbooks don't pass up cookbooks cookbooks. definitely and so if you're in college selling your books online when you're done if you're about to finish up in may there's another one (laughs) all right video games so we were just talking about e3 and uh video games are extremely popular kids are going to be engaged in video games playing that this summer online with their friends of course they have the online games so you don't have to have the actual physical video games but there's a bunch of them that are vintage or and or kids still love adults still love and they want to play them and when you think about video games it's not just the video games themselves it's also the accessories so again i should have put that but uh video games that's that's, there's a lot to that even the headphones the the uh wireless earbuds the all of the the microphone the headphones with the microphone like my son just bought that now he wants the remote can the car the wireless stirring wheel so he can do that you know that's not something that he can get through the game you got to buy the wireless uh steering wheel and so that's a separate thing so all of these video gaming type of accessories are a big thing that you should consider selling or looking into and if you find that kind of stuff and it's in quality condition it still works definitely list it ebay will take it all day uh some of the other platforms as well Make some money on that stuff. And you can bundle. You can bundle. You can make a bundle. Um, say you find a someone selling their Wii and you bundle the Wii, the Wii with the the controllers and with the with a couple of games that aren't worth much by themselves. You can just put them in with the bundle to kind of increase your your price on that bundle because you had has games and just not the Wii by itself. Um, and a lot of the 
if they have if they if people buy like the old Nintendo and the old Sega, they want that old feel. So they will buy old TVs, like an old TV, like those old ones, like those little kid ones with the little VCR that's hooked up to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they will buy those old TVs because they want that feel, that nostalgic feel of playing what of how it felt when they played the video games in their room growing up. Oh yeah. And these flat screen TVs don't give you that. No, they don't. So yeah, and you know, school's is gonna be out soon, kids. They're gonna keep their kids busy. So video games and video game accessories, pieces, all of that. So keep that in mind as an opportunity when you're running through, scrolling through the the, the, uh, the thrift stores. And right now, I know that a lot of thrift stores have received a lot of stuff, guys, because people were doing spring cleaning. <laughs> so they have a lot of donations right now. So this is a great opportunity for you to go, you know, spend a couple of weekends going through the thrift stores. You might actually find some really great deals. Clothes. Clothes year-round. Um, but you have summer clothes. You have people who They've been on a diet and they've lost some weight, but they they're not finished losing weight, but they want to show off what they have lost. So they're gonna, you know, look for lower prices on clothes online. Um maybe they are lose want to lose uh you know a hundred pounds and they've lost you know forty or fifty pounds, so they no longer fit in the shorts from last year, definitely not. So they're looking for some new shorts. So shorts are good and Camping clothes, kids mm -hmm. are going to, to uh, summer camp, swimsuits, uh, and such, um, all sorts of stuff. I mean, I sell clothes every day, pretty much. Name, name brand clothes, too. Name brand, and um, I do vintage. I've gotten more into vintage clothes, and you can you find some vintage T-shirts, maybe... You have your dad has a whole stack of old vintage rock band t-shirts that he doesn't want anymore. You'll make some pretty pennies on those. Hello. Listen <laughs> to Kelly. Look at Kelly. I mean, you know, this is what I will say. Um, I bought and I still have them. Um, Janet Jackson, the original Janet Jackson. Kind of, I went to, I think, two different Janet Jackson concerts. And of course, I think the first one I went to when I was 16 or 17, maybe 18. Oh, God, I can't even remember. Um, and then later on in life, like 25, 27, somewhere off in there. And so, uh, you know, having those, uh, having those T-shirts, like they're worth something now. Now the question becomes, are they yellow <laughs> or not? But they're and the original ones, so I gotta go look and see. Them. Yellow, torn apart, have holes in them. Still they'll buy them like that anyway. They'll still yeah, they will buy them anyway. Um, the other, like, and I also have prints. So those are the two that I have a boatload of those. And yeah, a boatload mm -hmm. of them. And then so, especially if the said person passes away, I hate to say it, but yeah, yeah. a lot of times their pri their stuff will go up right after someone has has passed away and people hate it that sell that sellers are like they call them vultures and stuff but if you already had it listed and yeah yeah it's really sad uh, those who have passed away but in any case just putting it out there into the universe so Next one is sports equipment. Um, as much like, you know, trying to get the kids outside, <laughs> get them doing stuff. Everything from helmets, knee pads, uh, scooters, <laughs> skateboards, bicycles, uh, baseball bats, soccer balls. I could go on and on, guys. Lots of sports equipment or just things for them to play in the backyard. You know, a badminton set and a volleyball set and a, a, what is it? The uh, cornhole. Like, stuff for them to do outside. So it's not always just sports equipment, but it is stuff for them to do outside and things to keep them safe and not kill each other. Like some kids are going to take up tennis this summer, so they're going to need a racket and somebody may not want to go to the store and buy a racket or buy tennis balls. If you can get a dirt cheap at a thrift store, then do that. And again, reminding you that people have done spring cleaning. So there's a bunch of stuff 
that you can turn over, like you can go and get. They've donated. Some of that stuff is brand new, especially in certain neighborhoods. So, you know, you probably have your thrift stores that you hit. This might be an opportunity for you to hit some different thrift stores in other communities and in other neighborhoods. Keep in mind, the prices are probably going to be different than not what you expected. But you also might find some really quality stuff. Because in some of the richer neighborhoods, they may have just collected the stuff, never used and say, okay, we're just going to donate it. And it's brand new, still sealed up in the packaging. <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else you want to add to that, Kelly? Yeah, and, you know, golf clubs and such. And just a reminder that starting April 3rd, that's t- today, um, that they're starting to add that extra fee for long stuff on stuff in the post office so you might have to ship that uh, those uh, those long larger items um with po- with ups or fedex because yeah. of the extra fees because it might be way much too much to ship normally or sell them on a facebook garage sale group or do ebay local pickup or mm-hmm. macari something like that if you don't want to ship it because yeah. I'm confident, i mean i don't know where you live but you know, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm confident that there'll be people who'll be willing to come get it. Now, that's always the challenge. When are they going to come get it and coordinate that? That's an annoying thing. Maybe we'll talk about that one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Antiques and vintage items. Oh, I love to do this. Um, learning, you have to really, this is a learning antique. It's considered, it's something that's considered antique once it's over 100 years old. And then vintage is something considered after 20 years. So you think about it, stuff from 2002 is now considered vintage. Everyone's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> stuff from 2002 is now considered vintage. Um, and I sell vintage clothes. I sell vintage um, kitchen you know, stuff. I sell vintage vases, vintage jewelry you know there's all sorts of places you can look vintage toys vintage plush vintage you know just it's a big uh category there and some people that's all they do is sell vintage stuff and people will pay for their uh for those memories they're like oh our, my grandma had something just like that i remember growing up ever and waking up every sunday morning at grandma's house and <laughs> we had cereal out of that same bowl and now they want that memory come back to them so they buy you know and they will pay up for that stuff too because it's no longer available they can't go to target and buy that same bowl because it's not there anymore. That pattern's been discontinued. Half sometimes, sometimes that company's not even around anymore. So people will, will pay up to ha- for those vintage items. There you go. Mm-hmm. I just you know I I know that there's a lot of vintage stuff that people are still buying, still collecting, still paying attention to. So the other thing is you might subscribe to different uh, you know newsletters or and or uh, you know follow some people that have their own blogs around vintage items and get some insight if this is something that you're not really familiar with you're not comfortable with so that that way you at least have a starting ground also monitor maybe some of um, the things that you see that are on eBay and some of these other platforms you know add it to your watch list just to see what happens with it if you're not really sure so then that way when you go to the store you know you are making wise choices if you decide you're yeah. going to buy this vintage item yeah once you start learning about vintage items you learn oh this is from this era because it has this kind of tag and it doesn't have this kind of tag you know you learn like this is a vintage nike pant you know shirt because of this tag this color you know it's all there's all sorts of stuff you can look online they'll tell you you know this is the reebok tag from the 1980s and this is the reebok tag from the 1960s you know so that it makes it easier for you to identify how old your items are there you go all right pictures and picture frames there's always going to be stuff that people want to put on their walls to you know 
not have blank space. I got blank space behind me, but <laughs> not to have blank space on their walls. And we're going, like I said, into Mother's Day. You're going into graduations. People are going to want to either put up pictures, they maybe even picture frames on their desk, um, things like that. There's some cool tools out there where you can get the digital picture frames that kind of rotate. And that's something that you find on the desk. And you might actually find one of those at the thrift store that somebody may have bought or whatever the case may be. So, um, you know, having things to put onto their walls, People are always interested in that kind of stuff. So I, I will say go. artwork is a big thing for you. You find that the thrift stores and you can pay five bucks and find out later it's worth 350 bucks because people don't know what they have. You know, they, oh, that's a nice picture, but I'm, I'm tired of it. So I'm just going to donate it, not realizing that, you know, that artwork is worth a lot. Um, I like to watch uh, Dr. Lori V on um, YouTube. And so many times she has people showing up. A, you know, I got this at the thrift store. I paid, you know, 10 bucks for it. And she's like, and she will tell them, okay, this is what you need to look for. You know, this, because of this frame and because of how it's stapled onto the frame and such. It's from this time and and it's worth, you know, $450, you know, and they're like, what? You know, I'm like, I need to start shopping where they shop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, Kelly. I mean, some of these guys in these big giant houses, they just want to get rid of stuff. And so they just get rid of it. They're like, okay, just donate. The donation truck is coming up Tuesday. Just put it all up. And you're like, okay. And then it just shows up at some thrift store. Maybe it's a high-end thrift store, but it's still a thrift store. You go in there and be like, okay, well, I'm not going to pay. You know, maybe they have it listed for 25 bucks. I'm like, oh, I'll give it to you for 10. And then you discover that kind of stuff. Like, you know, I'll take it for 10 and that kind of stuff. It's like crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So these are just a few things. This is not everything you should be thinking about, but we just want to give you a few things to think about. Um, we do have our niches and keyword research workshop that we're finishing up this week. And so we encourage you to come check it out. Um, you can sign up for it by going to bit.ly niche research one. So if you're a person that's trying to figure out what your niche is going to be for 2022, or if you want to maybe find more keywords for your existing niche or do research, we're going to be talking about paid methods and we're going to be talking about free methods to be able to do some keyword research and also niche product research, figuring out what to sell, how to find those products what should be your niche and how to validate whether or not that niche is a good niche or not. So come check us out. You can register it again, bit.ly forward slash niche research one. That's a capital N on niche and then a capital R on research and a number one. And then the other thing is that we do have our road to 10 K it's coming up um, April the 16th, I believe. So in two, at the end of the two weeks, right before, right after the taxes are due, <laughs> So April the 16th, we're starting the road to 10K and we're going to be talking about how to get to 10K on eBay and also on Amazon. So if you're interested in signing up for the road to 10K, go register right now. Um, it is going to be a small group because the goal is to actually monitor the activity that that group is doing and helping them really get to 10K versus just taking a class and going, OK, well, I took a class and I'm not there. No, no, no. Our goal is to actually have you engage in the activities that are going to help you get to the goal number of 10K. So go register. You can go to www.ecomsellersmastery.com to sign up for the eBay or Amazon course. So you can get to the 10K if that's your goal. And again, space is going to be limited. It's going to be a smaller, intimate class as designed to help those people that are serious in 2022, ready to go there in their e-commerce business. So if you're serious then you want to sign up for that. The next thing is I do encourage you to join us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> and once a month on Sunday um, for our daily, weekly, and monthly econ planning sessions. We say it's 15 minutes. It's really 15 minutes you spend to do the planning session, but we actually talk more than 15 minutes. And it's an opportunity for you to stay focused and stay committed and to increase your productivity in your business. So if you're struggling with being productive, if you're struggling with being consistent, if you're struggling with just being accountable, 
um, we want to encourage you to sign up for the econ planning session. So, and the thing is, sorry, I said sign up. You don't have to sign up. You just join the e-commerce planning Facebook group and go there. And then you can join us. We're also live on Clubhouse. And so each day of the week, we're going to be focusing on a specific area. So on Mondays, we're going to focus on organization. Tuesdays, we're going to talk about productivity. Wednesdays, we're going to talk about uh, time management. Thursdays will be consistency. Fridays will be goal setting and Saturdays will be planning. So Monday, organization, Tuesday, productivity, Wednesday, time management, Thursday, consistency, Friday, goal setting, Saturday, planning. If any of those are something like you feel like I need to get with it, I'm ready to stop messing around. I'm tired of my job. I didn't get to do the mass. The what was it? The uh, what do they say? The the um, resignation. This is the season of resignation, the mass exodus of res resignations, whatever it's called. If you didn't get to participate in that, you're ready to just leave your job and you want to make e-commerce your full-time gig, then let's get focused and let's get it done. So that's what we're going to be covering in the daily planning sessions. And you can just join the e-commerce planning Facebook group. There is no cost to you, but we do encourage you to get an e-commerce planner. So that would be the one thing that I would encourage you to do. So you can grab your e-commerce planner by going to www.myecomplanner.com. Again, www.myecomplanner.com to grab your e-commerce planner. And you can use that as part of your daily activities. Um, you can also get the digital version. We do have the digital version available. So you can grab either one of those. Uh, there is a promo code for 10% off if you wanted to grab that. Um, I'm going to say it is 10 OFF Ecom Plan. Again, 10, the number 10, OFF Ecom, E C O M plan, P-L-A-N, to get 10% off of your e-commerce planner and use that to help you um, on your journey. And then last but not least, if you wanted to get a free digital planner and a free regular planner, if you want to get both of them absolutely free, you can sign up for the Ecom Sellers Mastery Lifetime Plan, uh, Lifetime Membership. It's a one-time cost. You don't pay it ever again. Um, all you have to do is type in, if you want 25% off of the Lifetime Plan, you can type in 25-O-F-F-E-S-A, again, 25-O-F-F-E-S-A at checkout. So you can get 25% off of the Lifetime Ecom Sellers Academy program. All right. I think that's it this time. I didn't miss anything. I'm always missing stuff, y'all. <laughs> so with all of that being said, let me go back over here. My name is Nicole Whitlock. This is the Econ Sellers Podcast. We do this every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can join us, me and my co-host, my partner in crime, the one that's along for the ride, my, my Thelma and my Louise. So this, she's my Louise. I'm Thelma. So <laughs> So my co-host on this journey is Kelly, the Ecom Mom Ward. All right. We'll be back next Monday. You can join us next Monday on this journey, and we'll be more than happy to help you. If you have any questions, type them in the chat. Please share this out and join us next Monday at 830. And we're going to say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all.